What do I do with the nasal palatine nerve? This is a, a topic that was sent in as a recent question from a colleague who's watching the channel. And I will be honest with you, when we do all on X, we, we basically pop the palatal tissue, we pop that nerve, okay? Uh, on, on the vast preponderance of the cases, okay? And the, f the first time I did it, I was extremely nervous. It was years ago, back when I had more hair. And I was told by uh, my mentor that it will be fine. They will not have any problems. And, uh, you know, they said it a number of times over and over again. And I trusted them and I did it. And then I went and I said a prayer and I said, oh, gosh, I hope this works. And, and it did. And the patient reported no discomfort. And subsequently, for thousands and thousands of cases, we have uh, ablated the nasal palatine canal and or nerve tissue without ever a single patient ever reporting back uh, uh, any sort of paresthesia or anything like that. It also doesn't bleed very uh, much, so that it doesn't create a, a big bleeder as long as you don't go too uh, apical into the canal. And so it is really kind of a, a no-brainer anymore. So we don't really even think about it. Well, we've got to get that tissue out of the way in order to get the bone foundation guide in place for the surgery. And um, it just isn't a, a complication that we worry about anymore. So I know it's scary, especially if you're doing your first case. But the reason we believe that it's not a problem is because that palatal tissue right between the centrals is poorly innervated to start with, right? I mean, otherwise you wouldn't be able to chew on it. I mean, that area right there takes rough uh, particles of food, boluses of food that go right up against that palatal tissue. And if we had an abundance of nerves there, it would be very difficult to eat things like cornflakes or tortilla chips. Things like that would hurt. And we all know how good those things are. So we've got to have uh, the, the creator has to make us in a way where that functions well. So if it's not terribly well innervated to start with, when you, when you ablate that nerve, the patients don't have any sort of sensitivity there. There's no paresthesia noticed at all because it's not supposed to be innervated in the first place. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley. Follow for more.